Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ruben Sim again from Dent Boutique. Thank you for tuning in. Today's topic is all about the differences between porcelain veneers and dental bonding. This is one of our most frequently asked questions um, on a daily basis. And I suppose the reason why it's always a topic of interest to everyone is because a lot of people do not know the inherent characteristics of a composite resin veneer versus a porcelain veneer. Now, my job today is to run through with you the differences between the two and the potential advantages of between the two as well so that at least when you see your dentist to actually get the, the work done, you know what you're talking about, you know what the options you have and then make an appropriate and informed decision so that you get the smile that you want. So before we get started in terms of the differences between the composite resin veneer versus porcelain veneer, what I'd like to do is run through with you a little bit about smile design so that this will make a bit more sense when we talk about the differences between the two, um, two materials. Now, when we look at a smile, there are five things that we always look out for to ensure that our patients get the smile that they want and get a smile that they desire. And of course, we will give our input in terms of what your smile should look like as well. So now, out of the five things, the, in, not in order of importance, we always want to look at the color of the teeth. Now, ideally, the color of your smile should be nice, bright, a bit of translucency involved so that it looks natural and ideally it should sort of match the whites of your eye or brighter. It will then give you a very nice natural smile and approach. The second one would be the alignment of your teeth. How crooked are your teeth? How straight are they? Are there any areas in terms of uh, overlaps between the teeth? All these issues with the alignment can be rectified with either options but it just depends on the severity of the alignment. Now the third thing that we look out for in a smile design is the width of your smile. So in some cases, patients come in with very nice front teeth, but their back teeth are very narrow and they're tapered inwards towards the palate. Now when it happens, when a person smiles with such um, a teeth arrangement, um, it makes it smile very narrow and doesn't appear as full as it should be. A, a great broad smile would be, for example, Julia Roberts' smile. She's an actress, and if you Google, Google her photos and her images, you can see the teeth beaming right through to the back. Um, so that's a smile that I would say generally an attractive smile, but of course it depends on the lip and how sort of broad your lips are as well, uh, how broad the smile is. And finally, the smile line. The smile line is something that we always want to ensure that when do you smile, the edges of your lip and the edges of your teeth, from the back teeth to your front teeth, which are called the incisors, should sort of follow and have a seamless flow to them. Um, if you go onto our Instagram pages, you get to see a lot of examples of that, that uh, commensurates the five different smile categories that we, um, we always, always do to ensure that you get a good smile. So based on this smile five concepts, which, is, which are the color, the size and the shape, the width of the smile, the alignment, and at the same time, the smile line, based on these five things, then we can decide together with the patient which materials better for you. Now, before we proceed to discussing about the pros and cons between composite resin veneer and porcelain veneers, well, I would like to draw your attention to the similarities between the two. Both options are viable for patients who have got chipped teeth, misaligned teeth, crookedness, patches in the teeth, and some correction to the size and the shape. So they are mainly an aesthetic procedure that allows you to get an enhanced smile so that you get to smile a bit more confidently and not being afraid to take photos. Now the other similarity between the composite resin versus porcelain veneers is that in some cases we do need to trim your teeth. However, if your teeth are fairly straight and we are actually adding more material onto your teeth, for example, if your teeth are this small and we want to make your teeth bigger and longer or broader, the amount of trimming that we do will be actually quite minimal because there's no sense there's no sense for us to actually trim your teeth more to add more material on. So if your teeth are this narrow we want, and we want to broaden them, all we're doing is just adding more material to your teeth. And if your teeth are this short, we're just going to add more material to make it longer. So depending on a case-by-case -case basis, in some cases, yes, we do need to trim your teeth slightly. And in some cases, we don't have to trim uh, your teeth at all. Now, looking at this photo here, this patient has got fairly straight teeth. However, she's not very happy with the color of her teeth, the size and shape of her teeth because they're a bit small. Uh, at the same time, the side teeth are quite tapered in and the fangs are quite pointy. Looking at the next photo, this is after it has been trimmed. 
Um, so you can see the difference between the two. The trimming is actually very minimal and in fact, sometimes it's very hard pressed to tell that we've trimmed anything at all. So in some cases, yes, you need to trim your teeth, but in the majority of the cases, the trimming is going to be quite minimal, especially if your teeth are nice and straight. So let's um, talk a little bit broadly between the two different materials. Composite resin first off. Now composite, composite resin is a, is a material that's also used to fill um, the back teeth. So they are actually the, the same material that dentists use for white fillings. So composite resin comes in different forms, uh, as in different brands. And some brands are more aesthetic than other brands. So depending on which brand your dentist uses, sometimes the translucency and the colouring and the overall shine and polish of the composite could vary. Now the lifespan of a composite resin veneer generally is between about five years. Now the advantages with composite resin veneers is that the cost is lower compared to porcelain. The cost can be sometimes be a third of the overall cost of porcelain. Now the reason why this is, is, is a bit lower is due to the fact that it's actually no lab component, meaning that all, we, all the dentists will need to do is to get the proper composite and apply them onto your teeth. Of course, that goes without saying that the dentist would need to have some skill in terms of um, design of the smile, having the understanding of the smile concepts and the usability of the composite. Okay, so the advantage is that it's cheaper than porcelain. And the other advantage is that it can correct very minor deficiencies in teeth and some minor corrections in terms of the alignment as well. So if your teeth are, if your teeth have got only some minor issues that needs to be corrected, like a little chip or a little dot or anything minor, composite resin would be something that you can use to actually enhance the smile further. Now, you have to of course consult your dentist because uh, that's something only a professional can advise you on, whether a porcelain or composite could be used uh, effectively. Now, the disadvantage with composite resin veneer is that the lifespan of it is not as long as porcelain. I would say the lifespan of composite resin would be between three to five years. I find that a lot of times patients come in um, from, of course, from other practices and whatnot to, to, to actually enhance the smile further. A lot of this composite starts to stain and chip and break away within that period. Now, most of the time, if you look after your composite resin teeth, um, by coming, you're going to the dentist every six months, by allowing your dentist to actually polish your teeth back so from time to time to make sure that the composite is, remains fresh, the, veneers, the composite resin veneers should last you a bit longer. So the one disadvantage as I mentioned to you is the strength of it, and it can collect stains a bit easier than compared to porcelain. So if you drink a lot of red wine, coffee, tea, and, and whatnot, they will take up stains quite easily. So based on these facts here, the other component about composite resin veneers is that it can only, as mentioned, correct very minor corrections. So if your teeth are broken and chipped to a certain extent, sometimes the structure of your teeth is too compromised to have composite resin veneers or crowns. Um, and the only option is porcelain because porcelain would be a lot stronger in that sense. I hope this makes sense so far in terms of composite resin. Now, since we've covered three things so far. We've covered about the smile design, we've spoken about the similarities between the two materials and finally we've spoken about also the pros and cons for post composite veneers. We're going to embark on a journey to discuss about the porcelain veneers at the moment. So with porcelain veneers, the main disadvantage of porcelain veneers is that the cost is higher compared to composite. Now, in general, in, in Australia, porcelain veneers would range between $900, but it can go all the way up to $3,500 as well. So, this is a, there's quite a big range of cost, and the reason why there's a big range is due to two factors mainly. Number one would be the type of porcelain veneer. Now, as you know, in anything in life, there are many different kinds of um, materials of choice. For example, if you want a new bench top, for example, in your kitchen, you can have a laminate bench top, you can have um, scissor stone, or you can have real marble. All of them would function quite well as a bench top. But in terms of, in terms of aesthetic wise and in terms of texture and feeling, all three differences between laminate, the marble stone, and a scissor bench top would be quite different. So it's actually just a matter of choice of the material, but you still get a bench top. So similar to a porcelain veneer, porcelain is porcelain but there are differences in porcelain as well. For example, you can have a Cirac crown or veneer. Now, Cirac is a machine milled um, porcelain where it's done on site in a dental clinic. They mill it and they, it's milled, milled on site 
um, there's less of a um, handmade approach because they're all machine milled. There are other comps, there are other porcelain veneers which, is, which are handmade. For example, felspatic porcelain. There are, there are also other porcelain veneers which would include more of a hand press technique, which is like lithium, lithium disilicate, etc., etc. So, being a consumer, you probably wouldn't know what the differences are. But as a dentist, what we do um, at our practice, for example, we only want to work with something that's handmade, something that's customized to your smile, and something that will give you the best aesthetic outcome. Um, so that's something that we normally do in, in our practice here. Now, the other factor of why there's a difference in cost between uh, in Australia um, in terms of porcelain veneers is that the ceramics that makes the veneers for you would play a role. Now, for example, as I mentioned before, a Cerac milled or a machine milled veneer has got no ceramics involved in it, meaning that it's mainly milled in a the machine, therefore there's less of a, of a handmade approach. So you, you've sort of, you don't have that um, handmade boutique feel to, to the veneer. Now, the other approach, if you, depending on the ceramics that you use, you've got apprentices out there that's starting out. You've got some ceramics that all they do um, is a bit of veneers and they do a bit of um, dentures and a bit of orthodontic work. So there's, there's, a, there's a group of ceramics that does a bit of everything. Now there's a particular group of ceramics that only does mainly veneers and crowns and bridges. So they are the, like the expert for the, for the handmade type of veneer. So depending on which category of ceramics you use, if there's one at all, um, the price varies as well. So understanding these two concepts, meaning that the type of, the type of porcelain veneer and the ceramics that makes the veneers for you play a huge factor in terms of the, the total cost and the final cost of your porcelain. Now the third factor that we should not be, which is probably one of the most important ones, is that um, you need to look at the skill set and the understanding of a dentist towards what a good smile should be. So a dentist who generally has got more of an experience and who has got a special interest in cosmetic dentistry and who've done thousands of porcelain veneers and crowns, we generally tend to charge a little bit more compared to someone who's starting out, for example, because of the inherent ability for them to deliver the result once um, and get it done right in the most efficient amount of time. So these are the main three areas where the cost differs quite greatly in Australia and of course around the world as well. Now, the main advantages with positive veneers is that the material can actually um, correct the majority of issues to the smile. Size and the shape of your teeth, color of your teeth, the width of the smile, the alignment, and the smile line. Now, this is however provided that your teeth are not crooked to the point where porcelain veneers cannot do, because there's always a threshold and a limit to how much things can be corrected. So in the general scheme of things, composite resin veneer, assuming this is a spectrum of from the least severe smile to the most severe um, smile, what normally happens is that the composite resin would normally be able to, to actually help with something around the middle uh, to the early and middle stages. Porcelain veneers can go up to maybe the level eight or seven or eight, but when it comes to teeth which are too crooked, you will still need to do some form of orthodontic treatment first, whether it be with braces or some clay aligners. You need to get your teeth corrected and straightened prior to doing composite or, or porcelain veneers. Now that is something that your dentist would have to advise you on because sometimes it's very hard for uh, a lay person or a client without any dental knowledge to understand the, the reasons why sometimes the treatment like orthodontic needs to be done prior to any of these two treatments. So going back to porcelain veneers, with regards to the smile, they can correct most of the issues to your smile. The other advantage, advantage is that it very rarely takes up any stain. Because it's made of porcelain, it's very impervious to stain in general and porcelain veneers generally last between even up to 15 years. Now, a lot of times patients ask me, so what happens after 15 years? You do have to remember that anything man-made has a lifespan. Nothing man-made will last forever and in, even in some cases, any God-given parts of your body like your teeth may not even last you a lifetime. And that's why th things like fillings and implants and crown and bridges and veneers have come in place because they replace things that you've lost. So anything man-made, we will do our absolute best to ensure that you get the, the longest lifespan out of the material. But you have to understand that because the veneers are in your mouth all the time, you're eating, you're chewing, you're having red wine, fizzy drinks, um, cordial, all these things do tend to play a role to diminish the lifespan of veneers. So as long as you look after your teeth well and see your dentist every once in six months and have a good diet and a good oral hygiene routine, these veneers should last a while. 
Again, back to the question of what would happen after 15 years. Now, if your veneers are still looking beautiful and fine, you can leave them on for as long as you want, even up to 20 years if they are there. Now, if, there's, if there are stains around the margins where the veneers, when they sit on your teeth, there's actually a glue that's been placed on this, on this surface. Now, sometimes stains can start to form around the um, interface between the porcelain and the tooth. So what will happen is that sometimes we can just polish that back and just replace that part a bit. So it's very case dependent in terms of what can be done after 15 years. Is it something that we'll tackle uh, when the time comes? So in terms of advantages, we've got with four porcelain veneers, we can actually correct a lot of and the majority of your, of your smile defects. Number two, it is very impervious, impervious to staining, meaning that it doesn't take up stain very much. Number three, they can last you a long time. Now, the fourth thing is that it's a lot stronger compared to composite resin veneers because porcelain inherently is made of, of a glass material and it mimics the strength of your tooth in general. So regarding smile design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of um, what a smile design could do for you and what we, how we actually plan our case so that you get a smile that you want even before you start your treatment. So for example, when you look at this closely, you can see that she's got quite crooked teeth on the front the teeth are, the gums are quite low. At the same time, the width of the smile is actually quite narrow where it's tapered in. So when you look at this from the, from the side profile, you can see all these deficiencies there as well. And that's the main reason why the patient's coming to see us. Now, on top of that, she's got a lot of white, white composite fillings in between the teeth that's starting to stain. As I mentioned, um, that's, that's an inherent um, disadvantage with composite resin, uh, com with composite resin materials and filling. So this is what has happened once we design a smile. I'm gonna put this away for a while, and this is what we envision the initial smile to look like. Remember, this when we do a smile design for a patient, we will then first of all do a trial smile using wax, which I'm going to show you in a while. And with this wax here, this will allow me to once you fit it in the patient's mouth, this will allow us to then fine tune the smile further so that we will know that this smile would suit you as a patient and that you'd be happy with it. So this is what we envisioned it to look like. This is a smile design, the initial smile design prototype that we had for the patient. You can see that the teeth are nice and aligned, the gums, we've lifted the gums up in this, in this, in this, in this design here. At the same time, the rotated teeth are straight and the back teeth are nice and broad. So when, you, when I put them side by side, you can see quite a bit of a difference. Okay, so just from the side here and from this side. So just to give you an example with um, the severity of the smile, this smile here will not be able to be corrected with composite resin veneers because from a scale of 1 to 10, this is probably towards the middle to the end part of the spectrum. Um, so composite veneers would be material of choice for this patient. However, that's something that, again, you need to have a chat with your dentist to decide which material would be of, um, of a benefit to you as a patient. So thank you for listening to, to me for the past 10-15 minutes. I truly hope that the information I've given you would have given you a bit of a head start in your research to find a place that you can do your cosmetic dentistry with. You can, you know, the differences between the two materials and getting an understanding of what goes behind the scenes when someone makes um, a porcelain veneer or just some composite resin veneers for you. And that way you can be rest assured that at least you've done your homework and you know what you're getting yourself into and get an informed decision before you make commitment to, to enhance the smile. So again, thank you for listening and we'll see you very soon. Take care and bye.